Hi everyone and welcome back to The Happy Heart. I'm so glad that you guys came back today um, for another brand new video. This was actually something I saw on She's in Her Apron and it's the homemaker tag. And I actually saw it, was intrigued, wanted to watch it, and then I thought, no, 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 I wanna answer those questions myself. So before I watched hers, I thought I would make this video. If you guys don't know, I'm a homeschooling mom to um, just one child, an eight-year-old boy, but I used to have a career. I was an ophthalmic assistant and an optician, so I worked with eyes for like 15 years, like my whole adult life. And so the transition from working mom to um, strict stay-at-home homeschool mom, kind of still working mom, and has been a little bit hard. I think sometimes staying at home doesn't get as much credit as the work that is put into it. So I was really intrigued to answer these questions. I haven't actually looked at them. Um, so here we go. We're all on the journey together. Question one, have you ever had anyone say anything negative to you about staying at home or working from home? Absolutely. <laughs> People think that this really isn't a job, that this really isn't hard, and oh, yeah, but oh, I work harder here than I ever did at work, and I had a really intensive job. I was like pre-diagnosing and testing for a doctor, and that was like constantly doing puzzles, constantly doing math, uh, prescriptions, uh, things like that. And it was really intensive, like mentally draining work. I will tell you though, staying at home, <laughs> I would go back to work any day. Staying at home is so hard in comparison to that, but people do get view negative feedback and they don't think they think you kind of stay at home and don't do anything all day which is awful and I've had friends family people I didn't know judgment it's it's all there I think we've all had it question two what is your favorite and least favorite part of staying at home or working from home um, because I kind of do both I kind of work from home because I do YouTube and I do um, so, um, I write a blog and like I do some ghostwriting and stuff like that. So since I kind of do both and I'm a homeschool mom, I don't know which category I really fall into there. But favorite and least part is, hands down favorite part is that I get to see my child every day and I get to spend time with him. I remember when I worked that I would get off work. <coughs> Sorry, I've been fighting this cold, guys. You can hear it in my voice. I totally remember getting off work, and by the time I got home, it was almost 6 o'clock, and I get to spend maybe two hours with my child, and that was it. You know, plus you got to fit in dinner and baths and homework, and oh, it was really difficult. And so my favorite part is the fact that like I get to see my child every day. I get to interact with him. I get to hang out with him. Um, I get to watch him grow and see what he's doing. And um, time is so precious. And it's the one thing you don't get back. So money will, you know, money will always be there. But time, it's always fleeting. My least favorite part is that for the majority of the time, you're spending time at home by yourself or with your child. So it's kind of this double-edged sword. And it's not to say that I don't love spending time with my child, but sometimes you miss human contact. And I have to really remind myself like, hey, you need to like go out and see your friends and have a girls night. and Or you need to call somebody on the phone and talk to them because I'll go a week and I haven't you know talked to I've talked to my husband and my son and that was really it so it's kind of double-edged sword what number three what's your favorite and least chore my least favorite chore is cleaning the shower and cleaning the inside the bathtubs least favorite don't like it will clean don't even mind cleaning the rest of the bathroom just don't want to do that Favorite chore though? Ooh, I don't know. Favorite chore? Like, 
Does anybody have a favorite chore? I don't, I don't have something like cleaning or anything that I'm like a favorite to do. Okay. What time do you wake up and what time do you go to bed? Because I shoot videos for you guys and because I write, I stay up super late. So on average, I stay up till about three o'clock in the morning consistently all the time. Um, just because like it's easier to write when it's really quiet in the house and most writers will tell you like it's easier to write at night so I know I go to bed late as for getting up in the morning it just depends if I have something to do or like what the plan is for that day so usually I wake up I always set my alarm for around either 7 to 8 um, but I usually get my house kind of rocking by around nine usually. Next question, do you get dressed most days or do you stay in your PJs? <laughs> PJs, PJs, PJs. I cannot even say it enough. I'm wearing pajamas right now, let me tell you. So, um, I usually have pajama pants on of some kind, whether that be regular pajama pants, yoga pants, scrub pants, whatever it is, I usually have something like that on. If I have to go somewhere though, I always get dressed. Um, if I have to leave the house, I always get dressed. We go to co-op once a week and I always, you know, get up and get dressed for that. But, um, most days I stay in comfy clothes unless I have to leave the house. Next question. How often do you do your hair and makeup? I usually wash my hair every other day regardless, um, because my hair, like my roots get really, really greasy. Like I washed my hair today and I can still see it kind of getting greasy and, I use expensive shampoo. I've tried all these tricks, but um, I usually dry shampoo the next day. But um, I know that there's kind of like that taboo. You're not supposed to wash your hair so much, but um, because I have to wash my hair more than probably the average person, um, I would say I do my hair at least every other day. And um, I do my makeup if I have to go out or if I'm shooting a video or something like that. Um, and But usually I do it about every other day. Next question, what is your trouble zone or area in your house that needs the most help? Hmm. My, my child is actually behind the camera going, my room, my room. But probably my homeschool room I've been working on the most. That's my trouble area right now. Um, but normally it's actually there. I have like a bar area in my kitchen. Not really like an island, but more of like a bar area. And that gets stacked with papers. And I'll stack stuff up. But papers are like the death of me. Like mail? Oh my gosh. It's just, I'll have like stack of mail. And it's like bills that have already been paid, things that aren't important, and it takes me a really long time to go through stuff. So really like where all the mail gathers, wherever that may be, and it changes in my house all the time. So sometimes I was gathering it and it was like by my microwave in my kitchen, which was on the other side of the kitchen. And lately it's been in this bar area, which is like way on the other side. So like, you know. It's just wherever the mail gathers. Next question is, how often do you find yourself getting distracted? When I clean my house, most people like clean a room or they clean like an area. Well, I usually clean like a, all the living space, which is like my living room and my kitchen area and my family room, my entryway and my dining room. So I'm usually on a daily basis, I clean all of that up or pick it up and I usually vacuum and stuff like that. So usually what happens is I'm picking three things up in the living room, going and putting them away. On the way to the where I'm putting them, I see two more things and I, well in my head like, okay, go over there and pick those up. Next, so I'll go over there and pick those up, put those away. On the way to that, I see, so I get distracted all the time is basically what I'm trying to tell you. So, especially when I clean, I get distracted all the time. Although, even though I get distracted, everything still gets done. So hey, as long as you get everything done, right? Do you enjoy staying at home or do you miss your job? 
I do find myself missing my job and then I start to think about how it really was and I have to like give myself a reality check like do you remember this do you remember that do you remember this and once I start remembering all that it's almost like post-traumatic stress and I say no 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 I make myself feel better and so so glad I stay home what is your never-ending chore my, I think my never-ending chore is just the house cleaning in general. It's not really one specific chore because there's lots of times where I will get I don't have laundry to do because I'm so neurotic about it. But I can always find stuff on my list to do. Like, okay, well now I need to clean this closet out, or now I need to organize this, or I don't know. It's just the cleaning, like. Things, it can never be clean enough, it can never be organized enough for me, and so I think just the house clean and organization is kind of my never ending chore. Alright, what's your favorite way to relax or have me time? My favorite thing to do is write, just in general, and writing without having to like turn it in for a deadline or something like that is always a lot of fun. And so I like to have me time when my guys are gone. So my husband takes my son somewhere and when it's just me in the house. And that's probably my most relaxing time because there's nobody to like take care of. There's nobody that wants me. There's nobody that needs anything. How often does your husband or significant other chip in? My husband and I have been married for 11 years, been together. 12 years we got married in 2006 so um, we've been together for a little while and he is really good at chipping in and we kind of have just an understanding so there's things that I don't like to do that he doesn't mind to do and so we just have kind of a understanding of like you do this and I do this and everything works out so when you look at the weight scale like I do a lot more but he takes over the stuff that I hate doing. And to me, that outweighs the, the weight scale. So even though it looks like I'm doing more chores than him, he's doing the stuff like I absolutely detest without blinking an eye. So it makes it so much better. So for instance, I hate washing um, the bathtub and I hate washing like the showers like that drives me crazy and just not good at it um, and because I'm not good at it and it doesn't look good afterwards it makes me even more mad so through the years we've just kind of put these systems in place where the stuff that I don't like to do or I don't feel like I'm good at he'll kind of take the reins over and he'll do it and anything I ask him to do he'll do but I have learned over the years that I have to ask so he will never say no, he always chips in when I ask, but I have learned over the years. Men are just kind of more simple creatures, like they don't look at something and say, oh yeah, that needs to be done, but if I say, hey, can you do this, or can you do that, or can you do this, like it's no problem. We Our house kind of functions on that, so he chips in and, and we just have these kind of systems in place. Next question, if you have kids, when do you find time for chores? So to be honest, I did this before I had kids because my husband was in the military. So I kind of put almost like this system in place in my head and it's really carried through to like after we had children. So I try to get stuff done, like the chores and the errands that kind of pull me away from my husband or don't let us really spend time together. I try to get that stuff done while he's gone or at work. So for instance, when my husband was in the military, I would always go to the grocery store and all that. Um, say he was out training, I would always make sure I did that a couple days before he got done and came home from training and not like when he came home so he could go with me. Because then the time that we did have together, we could just be together and we didn't have to worry about all the mundane things that you have to worry about. Um, same thing with chores and 
errands and for a lot of years I just did stuff when he wasn't around so then I would have time for him. So really when we had our child, um, I just kind of carried the same thing through in a different kind of way. So I know the question is more like, how do you do chores when you have kids? And I had um, friends who had a really hard time, their husbands would get mad about this and say like that they didn't clean their house and stuff like that. But really like I would just allocate time after my kid went to bed, I would put them to bed at the same time every single day. So even when my son was a baby, when he was one, I think less than one, I would put him to bed at eight o'clock and I knew that um, the time I had from when he went to bed until I went to bed that I could work on stuff in the house that I couldn't work on when he was awake. Um, nap time, same type of deal. Um, so you get these like little chunks of time and that's kind of what I did to kind of get through everything. And also we kind of split up the duties. So I always, um, I always did the dishes after dinner. I didn't let him sit or fester or do anything like that because it just threw everything off the next day um, when my son was really small and I was taking care of him. So my husband would give him a bath and I would clean the kitchen. And we really like, we did that for a long, long time, like years and years because I hated giving baths just because they play and they splash water and they get it on you and that just bugged me. My husband on the other hand didn't care in the least and because all you have to do is kind of just sit in there and make sure they're okay and so this worked out great for us and so I would make sure the kitchen was cleaned and everything was set up you know bottle wise and everything for the next day so I put these things in place in the chunks of time that I did have and if for some reason I was really tired and I took a nap when my child did, I didn't feel bad. I just didn't make, I didn't let myself feel bad um, because I knew that I was doing well as a mom. Also, I didn't let my kid take out every single toy and play with it. I would give him like a basket of toys and like you can play with these. Um, I didn't let him make this huge mess. Um, you know, if you want to go play with something else, you know, you have to pick up these. And if you ask kids to pick up and you teach them, then they're doing kind of that work for you. Next question is, how do you balance being a homemaker and creating content on YouTube? And really, I just find little blocks of time where I can fit YouTube in. And sometimes it's really easy, and sometimes it's really hard. And I won't have a video for a really long time or something. Most of the time, I shoot my videos at night after everybody goes to sleep, and most of the time I edit at night after everyone goes to sleep. So I'm diligently working when my family is sleeping and I'm like sacrificing a lot of my sleep in return. What's your favorite room in your home and why? I think, I think my favorite room is probably my it's probably my living room, just because I try to make it warm and inviting, and this is where my family hangs out. When everyone goes to sleep and I'm working on a blog, or I'm working on like a YouTube video, or I'm editing, like this is, I do that all in my living room. Like I don't have an office or anything like that, so I'm literally just bringing my laptop and doing it. <laughs> so my living room is just my, my favorite room and it's the one that I put the most thought into, um, expense into, and I just like it. What's your least favorite room in your house and why? My least favorite room is, we have an extra bedroom in our house, we have a three bedroom house, and so I use one of the rooms as a homeschool room, and it is my least favorite room because it never stays organized. I can't come up with a system to make sure that it stays like clean and organized. It always looks like there's paper and stuff everywhere. Before I used it as like a spare room and things like that and we were doing our homeschool at the kitchen table 
and that was driving me crazy because I felt like there was papers and books and stuff all over the table and then I would try to make dinner and there I'd be cleaning up constantly 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 I am finding though that I have the same problem in the room uh, luckily though I can close the door and it's okay but it's my least favorite room just because of my OCD-ness. Do you feel like your home reflects your personal style? Why or why not? I definitely feel like my home reflects my personal style. I have a lot of things in my home are sentimental and they're things that only mean something to me and that is who I am. Like I'm all about creating memories and capturing that and I talk about time a lot and that's why I vlog, you know, it's kind of like to keep the memories and to, to keep that little bit close to you. Also I have words all over my house and because I'm a writer, the words help me and they inspire me and it's really awesome to have them. So I have different collages in my house full of sayings that really mean something to me. You guys can also see my home tour and I'll link it down below. What does your home smell like? I guess the easiest way to answer the question is that it's seasonal. If it's Christmas time, my house is gonna have some like cinnamon, um, because I love a cinnamon scent for Christmas. I love like the fruity scents for the summer and the spring. Oh my gosh, I love like a pineapple scent or like, um, I love like the Bath and Body Works candles that are pineapple. Um, and so I kind of go seasonal like whatever it is outside like right now it's cold outside but I have kind of like a, a light scent in here nothing like overpowering because it's cold and you just want to like come in your house and be really cozy so it's seasonal what is your strong point and your weak point when it comes to homemaking so my Strong point is that usually I can, my kid is a little bit older, he's eight, so usually I can get him working on some stuff and then I can go around and get all my chores done. So on most occasions I can, you know, get everything cleaned that I want to clean that day and I can get dinner going uh, when, and I'm making it when my husband comes home. So I think that's like a strong point, but it doesn't happen like that every day. My weak point is the fact that it bothers me when I don't get a list of things done. It bothers me when I'm not super productive. And because you don't have um, the satisfaction of like, I did this, this, and this that you would on a regular job, you don't ha if you don't get something done, it's almost like dissatisfaction side of you. Alright guys, that's it for me. Um, that was the homemaker challenge. Actually, it was a little bit harder than I thought, but I'm glad I didn't watch a video or look at the questions before I made this video for you guys. Thank you all so much for coming on over, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and those bell notifications to let you know every time I put up a new video. I will see you guys again for another brand new video. Bye!